What is up, you sexy YouTube mother lovers? Welcome back to our Gun Builder React series. Now, you guys loved it when we did our first video in the series on guns of the MCU, but many of you were quick to point out that there were a lot of scenes that were kind of involved gunplay of various types that may or may not have been accurate that uh, we did miss in that video. Don't worry, we were just keeping our powder dry because we knew we were gonna do this one. So, in honor of Spider-Man Far From Home coming out, we are going to be doing a second guns of the MCU. So, let's go ahead and dive right in because, damn it, you can use a, a million views right about now. You're gonna be okay. I knew we were gonna start with this one. This is the infamous scene from Ant-Man that was probably the number one comment we got on the last video is talking about this scene right here where uh, the ants are able to stop a Glock from firing by preventing the hammer from dropping and hitting the firing pin. There's only one problem with that, which is Glocks don't have hammers. Glocks don't have, uh, like a 1911 will have an external hammer. Oh, I got a Glock right here. Uh, this Glock, as you can see, has nothing. That's because Glocks are striker fired. They do not have an exposed hammer, meaning that this scene ends with a very, very dead Scott Lang. Uh, I don't know, I guess my biggest problem with this scene in particular is that a company was paid a lot of money to do some very nice CGI there, and that had to get approval from a lot of people that never stopped to wonder if Glocks ever had hammers, so. The CGI looks nice, but Scott Lang's still dead. Okay, so it looks like we're going back to the classics with Iron Man 1. Um, yeah, I know this scene where uh, Tony gets hit out of the air in his Iron Man, uh, Iron Man armor white by a tank shell. Uh, he's actually shot down by a tank, which, uh, go ahead and Google tank shells uh, for me real quick and just pull up uh, in a new tab, in another tab. Please don't click out of this video before you you know, pat our, our watch time a little bit, please. Thank you. Those are very big projectiles, very big, which means they carry a lot of mass. It, it, whether they explode or not, that's a very big hunk of lead moving very quickly. A lot of tank shells travel much faster than the speed of sound, meaning that that is something that is just carrying a lot of energy. Tony, I'm afraid, probably would not make it out of this scenario, but let's just go ahead and roll with it. Let's say the Iron Man armor is just absolutely fantastic. That's not the part of the scene I actually have a problem with. The problem comes here. Uh, where he is able to dodge a tank shell. Straight up matrix that shit. So here's my problem with that. Uh, that. Those tank shells, like I said, are moving very, very fast. So fast that before Tony's able to kind of figure out what he's looking at when that tank fires and process that image in his brain, that tank shell has already ripped through him and probably whatever was 20 yards behind him. This goes back into the whole trope about dodging bullets and everything like that. Bullets just move far too quick. You would never be able to process that. And uh, unless he's got some spidey senses that we don't know about, ah, uh, afraid Tony's gonna bite the bullet on this one. I did not mean that pun, actually. That, that was... That was unintentional, but I stand by it. Okay, so now it looks like we're in Captain America's Civil War. I think this is the clip where, yes it is. This is the clip that people were talking about a lot in our comment section of the last video again. Um, this is where, for what, well, he's gonna stay here in a second. AR-15s. I make seven hostiles. As a lot of angry gun guys on the internet were very quick to point out, those are not in fact AR-15s. I think they're using mostly just like Galils and SIGs and just a bunch of various stuff. I don't even know if there were any AR-15s out there. A lot of people are saying this is Hollywood's anti-gun trying to tell people that, you know, terrorists use uh, AR AR-15s. I think this is probably just written into the dialogue in the props department. I probably hit the bed on that one. As for the actual in-universe explanation for this line, I'm gonna have to give Cap a pass on this one, considering literally none of those guns existed when he went into the ice. I mean, hell, two years ago, my man hadn't even seen Star Wars yet, so I'm not expecting him to have every modern assault rifle memorized in this time. Okay, so later on in Captain America Civil War, this is where Bucky is taking on the Avengers, and he shoots Tony. Actually, yep. costume change. He shoots Tony right in the face. Luckily, he was wearing his patented Stark Tech glasses that apparently can stop a 9mm handgun. We have nothing like this. This doesn't exist uh, in, the, in the real world. Uh, actual glasses like that, especially stylish ones, that can actually stop a 9mm handgun round. That doesn't really exist, at least not to my knowledge. 
Um, but however, let's just say this is just Stark Tech again, and uh, he's just got cutting edge, cool stuff like that. The only problem I have with that from there, assuming that these are just like cutting edge, you know, ballistic shielding, is that when bullets hit something that is bullet resistant or bulletproof, they don't just disappear. So when a bullet hits something that's harder than it, that completely blows it apart, like let's say a steel target or something like that, there's actually something called spalling, where the pieces of the bullet fly out in a bunch of different directions because that energy is still there. Speaking of which, that would really still hurt like a bitch if you were shot with bulletproof glasses, point blank, because that energy doesn't just dissipate. That energy still just blew those glasses back into your head. So that would probably, if nothing else, give you a pretty severe migraine. You're not just gonna be standing there like absolutely shocked that this, you know, Cold War assassin is really willing to shoot you in the face. But if any of you out in the comments can find some super stylish glasses like these that are rated to stop 9mm, uh, go ahead and shoot me that uh, Amazon link. Look a brother up. So now it looks like we're going back to the original Avengers where uh, Loki has clearly pissed in Hulk's Cheerios because he's kind of just being Hulk. And uh, this is where he gets shot at by an aircraft of some sort. I'm not a plane guy. Guys, sorry, I'm, I'm a gun guy. I'm a jack of exactly one trade here. So <laughs> the, the weapon that's probably on this aircraft is, I'm guessing somewhere between 20 and 30 millimeter, uh, very big rounds, and it's doing absolutely nothing to Hulk. It's kind of pissed him off, um, and it doesn't look like he's particularly enjoying it, but mm, so these kind of rounds are typically designed to be leveling villages and uh, punching through heavy armor, tanks, pretty much anything out there. Um, if you're shooting at this, it's not going to be there when you're done shooting at it. And Hulk is kind of taking it like a champ here. It's not even piercing his skin, so it's just kind of bouncing off like it's fucking airsoft. And before you even say it, uh, you're going to come at me with the whole, oh, Hulk's skin is impenetrable, oh, it's all the gamma radiation, whatever. Uh, no, no, because a couple movies from now in Thor Ragnarok, he gets bit by a big ass wolf, and wolf teeth are able to punch through Hulk's skin. So. If a big ass dog can do it, I'm pretty sure that, you know, 20, 25 millimeter cannon's gonna be able to do it. Cause those, those, and those rounds probably explode. I have no explanation for that. None that you like. I wish there were some Spider-Man scenes we could throw into this. Uh, unfortunately in Spider-Man Homecoming, they didn't really use a lot of real guns. There were a lot of like alien tech guns and things like that. There was one scene where Birdman threatened Peter Parker uh, with the handgun. I can't really remember it that well, but I, there's not really a lot to talk about other than the fact that, you know, he's threatening to shoot a child. Which, as far as homecomings go, not great. So I think that just about wraps up the scenes that we have for today's episode. As always, you guys have your recommendations that you want to see us cover as far as your favorite movies, video games, uh, TV shows. A lot of you guys are saying Punisher. Uh, we'll probably end up doing that sometime soon. I have to kind of finish watching the show first, but there's a lot of other things that you guys are saying that we should cover. So uh, we, we do go through those comments. I try to stay pretty active in the comments section. So uh, whatever you guys want to see, be sure to let us know in the comments. Don't forget about hashtag AKG notification squad. And I will see you sexy mother lovers on Thursday. Thanks, guys. We're past 30 seconds anyway, but I guess we shouldn't be heavy on the swearing. Good luck to keep the monetization.